How's it going everybody? I'm Ulster PJs and I'm gonna code a game and I have no f***ing clue what I'm doing. The story of your life here, two young stars was born and y'all go die here. Oh lord, gotta be the yam. Billboard let's need to pack down, but number nine make sure he lives so yeah. Alright, so as I said, my name is Officer PJs. You can call me PJs and today instead of my normal gaming videos that I usually do, I'm actually going behind the scenes and learning how I can make a game. I've been so interested in this. Uh, for my background, I'm actually in, uh, I'm a, I program in Java. Um, I use quotations because I'm in school right now. I'm learning. I'm in my advanced class and I'm beasting right now. Look at that grade. Um, I still have so much to learn though and I know that. And yeah, but I'm just really interested in making a game and just seeing how it works and everything. So let's pretty much just get into it. One thing I do want to say is this is not a tutorial in any way. I have no idea what I'm doing, like I said. So don't try watching this thinking you're going to learn how to make a game because that is not what this is, all right? <laughs> all right, so the first thing that I did was quickly search up on YouTube uh, how to make a game. And I found this person called Braxies. Uh, if you never heard of him, go check out his YouTube. He has an amazing web series on exactly what I went to look for. And it, it'll be right in the description of the video, so go check it out. All right, so we start off by going to unity3d.com and installing it, and it took a little bit longer than I thought it would to install, but once we did, we just started out by opening a new project. Uh, yeah, so he told me how to pretty much just move around and navigate, then he actually eventually led me to making my own 3D cube and a little place for this 3D cube to sit on. And after that, we started implementing some physics. It, this allowed me to create two boxes that would like bounce off of each other, interact with each other. Uh, yeah, so eventually we changed one of the sh uh, squares into a pill shape and we saw that we could even get it to roll around if we wanted to. So about now is where the hard part came in. It was the coding. So Q Unity is coded in C sharp. And as I said in the beginning of the video, I'm pretty good at Java, but I've never seen C sharp, C sharp before. So I didn't know how this was gonna go. And I was able to follow along pretty easily because I've been in like a coding editor before, but if it was your first time, I sure would be intimidated. Uh, but pretty much just be calm and listen to what he says and you'll be fine. Uh, so the first thing that we actually coded was adding a force to our Z axis and which was making us go forward. So this is pretty cool that we can make it go forward, but it was going all crazy and in the air and everything. So what we ended up doing was changing the bottom floor that we were sitting on to a slippery material. And this let our object kind of slide on it instead of like colliding with the bottom object. Awesome. So now we can go forward. Uh, now, wouldn't it be nice to kind of go back to side to side? Well, that's exactly what we did right here. Uh, we added two if statements to look for the D or the A key getting pressed and that either put a plus or minus force on the X axis. So now we're able to go left to right. And I actually wanted to challenge myself. He didn't do this at all, but I want to see if I could just do it and figure it out. And it was super simple. All I wanted to do was add the ability to jump um, when I hit the space bar. And after some trial and error, I realized that I needed to type in the word space and not actually put a space and it fixed everything and I was now able to jump. But I ended up deleting this. Great. So now we can go forward, we can go left and we can go right. Now it would be very good if we could do all that and not see where our box was going. So what we wanted to do was kind of get the camera to follow us. Uh, this is where I actually learned how to make something either first person or third person. And for this game that I was making, I wanted to make it third person. So that's what we set up right here. So pretty much now the basics of our game were done. We're able to move around. We're able to follow the can the, blo the box. So now we're able. Now we just kind of got to make the actual game portion of it. I started out by making one level and I placed some blue color blocks that we wanted to avoid. The game, uh, the purpose of the game was so we would dodge him and make it to the end of the level. So I just made a little level that we can kind of navigate our way through and kind of code everything and get this one level as a sample. Awesome, so now that we had the obstacles and the levels done, we wanted to 
get away where if we hit that, we kind of restart the game, you know? So we ended up going back into the coding and creating a level restart. And what we did with this was we printed a message at first saying that we have hit an object and then changing that into actually reloading the first scene or the scene that you're on. And in theory, this was supposed to be a lot easier than what I had, but instead of doing it in the right way in the beginning, I had to delete all my obstacles and start over and do it the right way. Oh, I also didn't like how tall the obstacles were, so this is where I changed it. Ah, we are getting close. Uh, so the next thing I wanted to do is kind of see the bottom. It was really unorganized. I just wanted to put everything in the folders to make it easier for me. And after that, the game was done. <laughs> just kidding come on it's not that easy well how do the game be done if we don't even know the score that we're on or if we don't have other levels so let's get the st score down first uh so what we kind of did was added a simple ui element to the x-axis and it just showed how far we were from the starting point and we put that number at the top made it white and bada bing bada boom we got a score baby Ah, uh, so now we are able to keep score, we're able to move around, we're able to hit obstacles. I feel like we're getting pretty close now. Uh, so another thing that we didn't do yet is if we fell off, we wanted to fall, we wanted to actually restart the level. So, ah, uh, so now we are able to keep score, we're able to move around, we're able to hit obstacles. I feel like we're getting pretty close now. Uh, so another thing that we didn't do yet is if we fell off, we wanted to fall, we wanted to actually restart the level. So... And we're done. Great, we are moving along perfectly, wow. Um, so we're gonna go over what we have again. We have the moving forward, moving left and right, able to hit things and restart. If we fall off, we restart, and we can see the score. Are we missing anything? Oh, oh, wait, wait. How on earth are we gonna stop and advance to the next level? Well, I'm glad you asked that, you. Easy, we're just gonna put a cube and make that invisible and when we hit that, boom, you advance to the next course. Uh, so we wouldn't want to advance right away, right? No, we want a kind of screen that fills in between saying that we did beat that level and what we did was added another UI element and put my secret message there. Hey, you won! Congrats, if you got the level, hey, you won and we're going to the next one. And then it starts. So yeah, we just, you know, a little, little UI stuff just to make the game feel whole. <sighs> I'm tired. Are you tired? I'm tired. But that's game design. All right, let's keep going. So I wanted to make the levels now, and that's exactly what I did. And I started by making seven different levels. And this was simple, but what was more challenging was the screen after the seventh level, knowing that you, saying that you won the game and giving the credits and when it had buttons asking if you wanted to restart or quit, blah, 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 blah. So if you code, 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 later, and we have working buttons. Nice. Good job. Great, so we had an awesome end screen and we're able to restart, but how are people going to start the game? Well, psh, again, I'm glad you asked that. You're asking such good questions. Good job. Uh, the next part I did was put together my game menu and it would be nice if there's a lot of different options, maybe one day, but right now I just add a start button. What, what's wrong with that? You know, are, are you mad? Are you mad? Are you mad? Don't be mad. All right. Oh, no way. Is my so? god it is done ba boom ba bing we have a game <laughs> um i wanted to make it for iphone so badly but let me tell you it is so subscribe hard i don't even know what the hell to do so for my noob self i just stuck to exporting it to mac and windows this was super simple and for windows i even made up a setup file so you just have to click this one uh button and it will actually install it into your computer uh, mac it's just as simple as downloading the app and running it i officer pjs have officially created my very first game ever and it was honestly a lot of fun so to get started Welcome to PJ's Cubed.
guys enjoyed it because I had so much fun doing this. I love making games and that I, I figured out, so I'm gonna keep up to it. I'm gonna try making this kind of into a zombie game where you gotta avoid the zombies and put it on the app store. Oh man, I have so many plans, guys. Just make sure you guys stick up with the channel because I'm posting constantly. I'm trying to post so much now. I'm trying to make a bunch of videos. I have gaming videos. I'm trying to make some more tech videos. Uh, new ones should be coming soon. Um, and honestly guys, I just appreciate all this love and support. I love you guys so much back Go check out my Instagram my Twitter my twitch my YouTube everything you want, you know officer PJ's is up for everything Thank you guys so much again, and I'll catch you next time peace